Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video I got some really interesting bodybuilding news and updates for you guys, and we're gonna start with an update of Nick Walker. So first of all, we got this little mirror selfie, it's not much, you can't see much of his physique, you can see that he is, you know, trying to keep his waist tight, the conditioning is slowly coming along, he's like 13-14 weeks out of New York Pro, so now his conditioning should be changing on a weekly basis, and you can see it, like, you can see some hardness that he didn't have a week ago, you can see it in his shoulders, in his arms, in his chest, and, you know, his abs are getting more tight and, and more conditioned, so, yeah, he looks good right here, but he doesn't really look as good as he could look if he found a really good lighting and if he hit a pose i mean taking these mirror selfies this is awesome if you're a man's physique competitor and you have a really small waist and you're gonna look sexy for the ladies but if you are a beast if you are a monster if you are a mutant like nick walker you are not gonna look your absolute best in these kind of photos okay he likes it he likes to show us his waistline and that's all good but like that's not what we want to see we want to see the freaky updates, the freaky poses. We want a freak show from Nick Walker because he is an absolute freak, a mutant. But even his physique updates when he's hitting the bodybuilding poses, he doesn't look as good as he could. Again, if he found some really good lighting like all of these bodybuilders are doing. In order for us to kind of grasp how big this guy actually is, we need to watch his YouTube videos and you can see it there when he's a little bit pumped, when he just stands there under like good lighting, you can see how big, how impressive this guy actually is. I mean, check out this freaking shoulder right here and those freaking arms. He looks insane right now, like he is, he's 285 by the way. He's over 280 right now with this conditioning at his height of 5 foot 7. This is just ridiculous, man. This is just insane. So Nick Walker is a really really massive bodybuilder, but he's not really showing it. I mean, take a look at this one. This this video is probably even more impressive. Like look at the size of those freaking arms and shoulders also. It seems like he improved his shoulders. I don't think his shoulders were this massive. I think the next time he steps on the stage, he is gonna be a complete new level of a freak, something we haven't seen so far, and it's probably gonna be enough to win the Mr. Olympia, look at him here, look at how massive this guy actually is. Should we maybe be worried about him getting so big? Well, maybe we should, but I'm enjoying a freak show, personally, and I wanna see him on stage, and I wanna see him dominate the New York Pro, which I believe he will do, and he is very confident that he's going to just destroy everybody on that stage. And that's exactly what he says. Take a listen. The confidence that I have, you already know. Like, I have no doubts in my mind I'm going to win this show. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think anyone will even come close to me. I don't give a who you are. You will not touch me. I am still third best in the world. So if I let any competitor that's extremely below me beat me, uh, uh, you're you in know, trouble. You big time. Yeah. So you heard it. Naturally, of course, I mean, Nick being Nick, he's very confident. He believes he's going to destroy the lineup at the New York Pro, which he should, really. I mean, he won the New York Pro the first time he did it. It was his, let's say, actual pro debut. Yeah, he did Chicago right after he turned pro, but he had some off-season time before the New York. So let's say that's his pro debut. He won the New York Pro as his pro debut. And he won Arnold Classic afterwards, and he placed 5th and 3rd at the Mr. Olympia. So, I mean, this guy should, this should be a cakewalk for him. As of right now, we don't really know any heavy hitters doing the New York Pro. Like, maybe it's gonna be Robiel Mosquera, maybe it's gonna be somebody else, like Mikkel Krejci, I don't know. What we do know is that the previous years, last year's 2023 New York Pro champion, Tony Burton, is doing it. He is preparing to defend his title. But is he really in a conversation of winning it? Can he actually challenge Nick Walker? Well, at this year's Mr. Olympia, Tony Burton placed 8th. Which was an awesome success, but it's not really on the level of Nick Walker. However, Tony Burton has a completely different physique to Nick Walker. He has a small waist. He has that bubbly kind of muscle, but he's not very big. He's a smaller guy, he's definitely on the smaller side, but 
He has that bubbly type of look and small joints, so he seems, he appears bigger. People are calling him New Dexter Jackson, because he does remind a lot of Dexter, like he has good conditioning, he's very very hard, but he's not the biggest guy. So what could happen, it most likely will not happen, but potentially maybe Nick could show up with a big bubble gut, right, without good control, and maybe he misses the peak, maybe he doesn't come super shredded, and Tonio shows up like this, Tonio shows up peeled like this. I know, it's not likely to happen, Nick is always conditioned, but is he this shredded? Yeah, I mean, this video is filtered, but still, is Nick ever this shredded? I don't think so, I don't think he has this kind of hardness that this guy has, I mean, this is basically the new Dexter Jackson, this guy has the quality of the muscle, the hardness, the graininess, and also, he has a small waist, he has a really beautiful structure, and if you guys think about it, back in 2016 at the Arnold Classic Europe, Big Remy was 310 pounds, with good conditioning for Big Remy standards, and Dexter was only 230 and Dexter won, rightfully so, because in the poses, with all the detail and thin skin that Dexter had, I mean, he was known as the Blade, he still looked better than Big Ramy, even though Big Ramy was much bigger, you couldn't really see it on stage. Yeah, the situation is not exactly the same, Dexter already won the Mr. Olympia and plays top 3 at the Mr. Olympia who knows how many times and won who knows how many Arnold Classics and pro shows, so it's not the same of course, but there is a small possibility of something like that happening, it most likely will not, I'm just saying. And here is the physique update of Tony Oberton, we got another one, but in this one he says, talk the talk. And who is he referring to? Of course, he's referring to Nick Walker, who said multiple times that he's going to destroy everybody, that nobody on that stage is going to be able to touch him. And when Nick Walker is saying that, of course he has Tonio Burton in mind, because he's the defending champion. So, Tonio's reply is, talk the talk. <laughs> And so here's Tonio at 14 weeks out of New York Pro, and you know, I don't think he's gonna look much different from the Mr. Olympia, but who knows, maybe he improves a little. Uh, can he beat Nick Walker? Well, you guys tell me in the comment section down below, is there a chance of Nick Walker losing the New York Pro to this 2023 New York Pro champion, Tonio Burton? An 8th place finisher at the Mr. Olympia, by the way. Alright, next up we got an update of Rubiel Mosquera, who as you guys know is on vacations, multiple vacations, uh, he is not really willing to prep for shows right now, but yeah, he found a gym, and here he is in the gym, and he trained, guess what, no, it wasn't his neck, maybe it was after he trained legs, so <laughs> he's still trying to get those legs to be, I don't know, bigger, does he really want those legs to be any bigger than they are right now? I don't think he should, maybe he could benefit the most from completely stopping the leg training, probably that would be the best idea, however, he doesn't get many chances to train because he's back with his family in Colombia and there is no gym over there, in that part where his family lives and he travels a lot on vacations, and so he probably doesn't have an access to the gym every day, he probably doesn't train that often, but when he gets an opportunity, he focuses on legs, that's what he does. How much sense does this make? Not a lot, definitely not a lot. You can see here in this physique update, his upper body looks smaller, you know, his legs look freaking gigantic, but his upper body looks smaller, and I believe that's because he has a nasty leg pump, and when your legs are this big, they draw the blood from your entire body, and so his entire upper body is so depleted, it's gonna look smaller, for sure. But also, he's not very regular with training, he's probably still off of everything, but I mean, whatever he's doing, whatever his plan is, one thing is for sure, he should lay off the legs a little. And I think if his legs get a little bit smaller, it wouldn't hurt his physique, he's already really big in the upper body, so it's not like he's doing well only because of his legs, he's big everywhere, his legs are only creating an imbalance, and because of all that size, probably he is not having the best detail in the legs, so he should definitely take it easy with the legs, however, he is not really willing to do that, maybe he likes to have an impressive body part, and he wants to make it even more impressive, kind of like what Tom Platz did, maybe he has the same mindset, 
He wants to have one super impressive body part to impress everybody when he steps on the stage, but not necessarily be the most balanced bodybuilder and, you know, win shows, be at the top at the Mr. Olympia. For example, Flex Lewis, and I believe Jay Cutler as well, they stopped training legs for a couple of years at certain points in their careers because they wanted to let the upper body catch up, they wanted to be balanced and to actually do well, to win shows. Jay Cutler won the Mr. Olympia, Flex Lewis also in 212, and if this guy wants to be that good, that's what he must do, but right now it seems like he's not really willing hopefully somebody chris cormier is gonna talk some sense into him because this is a change he needs to make oh and by the way if you guys watched my uh, brion versus nexilla video you guys saw that brion posted a couple of shots with nexilla but he deleted them and then he posted this one because yeah in this one things look more equal things actually look fine for Rubio, he actually looks decent in this pose inside chest so i'm guessing and i'm pretty sure this is how this went Rubio didn't like the post so he asked him to delete it and then brion offered him a couple of other shots uh, and let him choose which one so they probably agreed that this one is good for both of them and brion posted this shot and yeah absolutely Rubio here looks fine brion is not out angling him they are looking in a good ratio for a classic guy versus the freakiest open bodybuilder in the world right now all right, we also got a back update, a physique update of Wesley Wissers, who looks shredded right now, honestly. There is like three weeks less than three weeks left until Arnold Classic, and Wesley is getting in serious condition. Now, what I wanted to address in this video is all the comments in his comment section, so you can see that a lot of people are wondering why Wesley is not placing higher than Mr. Olympia or at all of these shows i mean take a look at this shot for example his back lat spread like this back is looking really lean really shredded and really freaking thick for a classic guy and overall in some poses like this uh, back twisted shot he looks really classic as people like to say you can see the third comment right there the most classic competitor by far but what does classic really mean today Having a golden era type of look, you know, reminding of Arnold Schwarzenegger or some other old school bodybuilders, you could say that's classic, but today we have classic physique category and the criteria in that category is not exactly like that. It's a bit different. Conditioning and details is very important. Structure is also very important. Development and completeness, all those things are criteria in classic physique and I want to explain you why Wesley is not placing higher. Why is he not a Mr. Olympia or an Arnold Classic champion? And I'm sure a lot of you guys who follow me and this channel, you guys know the criteria. You understand why Wesley is not placing higher. But I'm sure there is a lot of people who don't really get it. This is an older shot. He is definitely bringing better conditioning these days. But you're going to get an idea if you take a look at this uh, photo, for example. Because the main problem of Wesley is his structure. You know, his waist from the front is not very small. It's kind of a wider waist. His lats are a little bit high inserted. His legs don't really have the right shape and the details. His chest could be fuller in the side chest pose. There are definitely things that this guy is lacking. And it's mainly structure. And it's also, I guess, graininess, details. That type of thing that, for example, Chris Bumstead has much better. Ramon Dino, Urs Kalecinski, Brion Ainsley, Rav Diesel, all these guys. That being said, I also gotta say that Wesley is actually a great bodybuilder. He won so many classic shows when he qualified for all those Mr. Olympias, so he's one of the best, you know, he's like 8th, 7th best in the world, but not better than that, and I also gotta say that that's also arguable, because yeah, in all of his shots on his Instagram, Wesley looks like a Mr. Olympia champion, but you know, on stage it's a bit different story, and there is an argument that says that classic physique is kind of a popularity contest, because if you take a look at the top 8, which is sort of a cutoff in Classic Physique Mr. Olympia. You have a top 8 call out and then everybody else. All those guys in that top 8 are very, very popular on social media. And there is a whole bunch of other guys in those 50 Olympians 
or more that potentially could beat some of the guys in the top 8, but they don't really get a call out. They are not really seen because they don't have big names. And I think there is some truth to it, because again, so many guys, it's hard for the judges to notice somebody unless they are already popular, because this is not bodybuilding. The criteria in classic physique is still not exactly super strict. You can get the idea, but it's not exactly like bodybuilding, so yeah, I feel like you need to have a big name to be noticed, and Wesley has a really big name, but he did make a lot of progress lately, and uh, yeah, I mean, he definitely does look like somebody who should be somewhere in the top of classic physique, but like higher than where he's already, no, no, I definitely don't see that. If you guys disagree, however, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.